Well, now to Tokyo and some good news for gymnastics fans. Team USA has confirmed that Simone Biles will be competing in the individual balance beam final. It's the 24-year-old's last chance to win one more for the U.S. in Tokyo after she withdrew from several competitions to focus on her mental health. Biles' decision to compete tomorrow is being celebrated by fans after she drew both praise and criticism for pulling out. So Jamie Yukis is in Tokyo with the very latest on this. Jamie, what more can you tell us about Simone's decision? Well, we do know that she wasn't able to compete in the floor and she hasn't competed in, in the other events that she was scheduled to compete in. So this is really big news to hear that she is going to go ahead and try doing the balance beam. I think some people surprised. We talked to uh, one of her performance coaches uh, that was with her in Rio earlier today, and he thought that it would be very unlikely for her to go ahead with the balance beam because when you have the twisties, you're talking about being on such a small apparatus at that point in time, just a few inches thick, that you, know, you really can get goofed up on that. But as she said uh, prior is that she was going to take all of these events day by day. And that's what we've seen her do is that each day, you know, we would we would wait to hear if she was going to compete in the next day event or not. And today, I will tell you, we all were kind of looking at each other because it's come around uh, about 11 in the morning Tokyo time. We had been hearing whether she'd compete in the next day's event. It went from 11 to noon to one to then this evening. Uh, and she finally it came out on the roster that she would be competing in tomorrow's events. So everybody uh, looking at that, I, I'm sure she's going to have a lot of eyes on her. One of the other suggestions by the performance coach is that she put the phone away. She only focused on her loved ones, her teammates, uh, people she, that she knows care about her so that she can really go into this event and know that she's doing her best. Uh, you know, people who have known Simone, too, they were fearful that if she didn't compete at all, she may be disappointed in herself in the long term, uh, that she didn't finish doing any of the events here in the Olympic Games. Uh, so this is... Well, We'll have to just wait and see kind of how she comes out, how she performs, and what she does. But a lot of people are very excited by the news that she will be performing here in Tokyo. Yeah. Um, so let me ask you about some other things going on over there. A uh, Belarusian sprinter walked into Poland's embassy in Tokyo today after refusing to board a flight that she says was against her wishes. What do we know about this, and have you heard any update on her current situation? Yeah, this has become quite the story, right? A lot of people talking about this because it's a little bit unbelievable that at the Olympic Games, where you're supposed to be very inclusive, there's supposed to be 206 countries all coming together peacefully. Uh, you know, it turns out that this runner went on social media and started talking about the fact that her coaches were disorganized and they had put her in a race that she's never run before. She didn't want to do it. Uh, she was speaking out. You know, there's been a lot of, of athletes, especially American athletes, speaking out about their mental health and different things. So to us, it doesn't seem, you know, that big of a deal. But in Belarus, where you have, uh, you know, as somebody has described him as the last dictator of Europe, uh, Lukashenko in charge, you know, you look at that situation and it turns out that the government came, told her to pack up her bag, took her to the airport, as she says, against her will. She goes to the airport. She refuses to get on the flight. And as you said, now has asked uh, Poland to step in. So it seems like they're trying to sort this all out. Uh, the Japanese government officials here say that they will help her try to get on a flight to Poland. So we're going to have to watch and wait and see uh, what transpires here. But the other thing a lot of people may not know is that there was a blogger earlier this summer who had written about um, some of the games and, and some of the opposition to uh, the different coaching and the government. And he was taken off a plane at one point in time. Uh, so this is a situation that's been going on for a while. They, not liking that these athletes have, have been outspoken about the fact that they don't feel that they've been protected and they feel that the games have been disorganized for their country. Yeah, uh, let me ask you about an, an American athlete now, U.S. shot putter uh, Raven Saunders. Uh, she was on the podium. She won a silver medal. Um, she is black. She is uh, LGBTQ+. Plus, and she raised her hands, her arms over her head and made sort of an X. Um, she told um, NBC that it represented what she called, quote, the intersection of where all people who are oppressed meet. Um, but I don't know mm -hmm. if that's sort of within the boundaries of what you're supposed to be allowed to do in Tokyo. What's the response been like and what's going to happen? 
So this is another interesting one people are talking about because the United States has come out. The United States uh, Olympic Committee has said we support her. She didn't disrupt her other teammates. She came up. She just did the protest. And now the IOC is having to look at this and decide if they what, what type of punishment they want to go after, if they want to go after a punishment. Now, you may remember that these Olympic Games, unlike ones in the past, the International Olympic Committee has gone ahead and they've loosened some of the rules in terms of allowing uh, players to kneel on the field. We saw that with uh, women's soccer earlier uh, like when, the, when things first started, when games first started here. So, you know, they had loosened some of the restrictions on protesting because of all the social issues and racial uh, injustices and, and all of these issues that people have been talking about. Uh, so they had loosened some of that up. But the one rule they had was that you weren't supposed to do any type of demonstration on the podium. Raven Saunders comes up. She ends up doing this X, as you talked about. And so now there's discussion about if or anything should be done. I can tell you she took to t so social media and said, I'd like the International Olympic Committee to come after me, come take this medal for me. They're not going to get it. I don't even know how to swim, but I'm getting out of the country. I I'm out of here and I'm taking my medal with me. So um, there is a lot of back and right. forth on this. She is very outspoken. She is she's out as a lesbian. She's very proud of that. And, you know, she's got the dyed hair. She's got the Hulk mask, people paying attention to her. And this was just one more way for her to be outspoken. Yeah, she doesn't back down uh, easily. Um, it's probably what helps to make her uh, the level that she is in terms of an athlete. So we'll see how it unfolds. Uh, Jamie, thank you very much.